Glory to God. Amen. Turn and look at somebody and tell them you're in the right place today because the God of miracles is in this place. And then tell somebody else, expect your miracle today. Amen. Praise God. All right, you can be seated. Hallelujah. Good to see everyone this morning. This is my first time to be in the two services. What did we start about three weeks ago? Yeah, great. Praise God. Early risers. Amen. Praise the Lord. We just finished our annual Heritage of Faith Ministerial Association Ministers Conference, and I'm telling you, it was awesome. Amen. All of you should have been there. You're all preachers, right? I mean, hadn't Justin made preachers out of you yet? <laughs> Hallelujah. But we had a great time, and, and uh, one of our special guests was Richard and Lindsay Roberts, and, and uh, Richard's going to be ministering in this first service, and then I'm going to be ministering in the second service, and I can hardly wait because I am going to introduce the Word of the Lord for 2019, <laughs> praise God. <laughs> Amen. So we're excited about that, and... Uh, are we ready to turn Richard loose? Yeah. Amen. We're going to loose him and let him go. Hallelujah. Let's give Richard Roberts a warm welcome. Hallelujah. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hallelujah. Give praise to the Lord. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Wow, thank you, Brother Jerry. It's an honor to be here and to have been a part of the minister's conference the past several days and uh, uh, to have a chance to be with you this morning. This is also my first time since you began two services. Thank God. That's wonderful. Praise God. And to see so many of you in this early service reminds me of the story of the of little boy who was standing out in the lobby of the church. And he was looking at this plaque on the wall that had all these men's names on it. And he had this quizzical look and the pastor walked up behind him and said, son, well, what's the matter? He said, well, pastor, what are all these names on this plaque? And the minister kind of gave him a somber look and said, well, son, those are the names of the men who died in the service. And he replied, was it the nine o'clock or the 11? <laughs> <laughs> well, no one dying in the 9 o'clock, no one dying in the 11 o'clock, in Jesus' name. Uh, my dear wife, Lindsay, is with me. Lindsay, sweetheart, come over and give a word. Come over and get, say a word. Can she have a microphone, Pastor Justin? Good morning. Well, I got to listen to one service with Brother Jerry and one service with Richard and I said, I'm coming back and I drove over yesterday only to find, like, is every road in Texas closed? And so my GPS, no, just I 30. <laughs> my GPS took me to a person's driveway. And I said, well, how about that? And as I began to pray, I said, Lord, my first thought was I'm turning around and going back home. And I said, no, I'm expecting a miracle. I'm coming to this service expecting a miracle. And as you can see, you know, there's, Lindsay, what were you thinking? And Lindsay, what were you really thinking? I turned around in my car, reached back, tried to pick up a purse that was way too heavy, stuck on a seatbelt, and I goofed up my shoulder. Now, every woman sitting there goes, I know what she did. So now while you're all sitting there and you're all shaking your heads at me, this is a great day for a miracle. Mine, yours, Brother Jerry and Carolyn the church. It's a great day for miracle signs and wonders. And I have to tell you, I already got a sneak preview of what brother Jerry got for 2019. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So get ready because it's all going to be good. And I think it's going to start like right this second. So thank you all for allowing us to be here. He who findeth a wife findeth a good thing, hallelujah, and shall obtain the favor of God. Woo, glory to God. Give her a big God bless you. Open your Bibles this morning to Psalms 81. Psalms 81. 
Psalms 81 and verse 10. Psalms 81 and verse 10. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. Listen to these words. I am the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Open thy mouth wide, and I will fill it. I am the Lord. I am the Lord. Exodus 15, 26 says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. We're talking about God Almighty. God who created the heavens and the earth. God who hung this world on nothing. God who piled high the mountains and dug deep the gorges and traced the rivers with his fingernails and created us and every living thing, God Almighty. I am God and there shall be no other God before us. He said, I am the Lord. I am God. I am the one who delivered you out of the hands of the Egyptians. And the Egyptians in this scripture represent Satan's hold on our lives. Every one of us has been brought out of something. Many of us have been brought out of a life of sin. We've been brought out of a life of fear. We've been brought out of a life of worry and anxiety and depression and discouragement. Some have been brought out of, 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 of sickness and disease and all types of things. Turn to your neighbor and say, I have been brought out. I have been brought out. God has brought us out. He brings us out of our problems. He spoke to Moses and Moses delivered the children of Israel out of the bondage that Satan had put on them for some 400 years. He said, I am the Lord who has brought you out. Amen. Then he says, open thy mouth wide and I will fill it. In the old days, in Bible days of ancient Persia, it is said that the king, or the shah, as he was referred to in those days, when he received a special visitor or an ambassador, he would say to them, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. And he filled the visitor's mouth with sweet meats and diamonds and jewels. But that's not what I'm talking about today. I'm talking about the Lord saying, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. You know, unless you're a ventriloquist, you can't speak without opening your mouth. <laughs> I was watching Britain's Greatest Talent the other night, and there was a young girl who was a tremendous ventriloquist. But you know, very few people can do that. We have to open our mouths to speak. We have to use our teeth. We have to use our tongue. We have to use our lips. A man said to me, well, Richard, I speak in tongues, but I never open my mouth. I said, how do you do that? <laughs> How do, you, how do you pray in tongues and not open your mouth? Yeah. And God is saying, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Now let's look through the Bible at, at men and women who opened their mouths wide and God filled it. Look at Abraham. Abraham and his wife Sarah were living in the Ur of Chaldees, which we know today as Iraq. And God spoke to them and said, get up from your kindred and go to a place that I will show you when you get there. Imagine. God speaks to you, hopefully not yesterday on I-30 like Lindsay did. <laughs> but he tells you to get out on the highway and start driving and you're not going to know where you're, gonna, where you're going until you get there. Your GPS is worthless because you don't know where you're going. You're just going. Well, that's what happened to Abraham and Sarah. And when they got to the place God wanted them, which turned out to be what we know as Israel, God said, you have arrived. Hmm. Opening his mouth wide was in his obedience, in doing what God said. And God said, I will bless you and I will make you a blessing and you're going to have a child. He gave him that word when he was 75 and when Sarah was 65, well, that's not very likely to happen in the natural. And it didn't happen until they were 175. But the Bible says that Abraham believed. And because he believed God, it was accounted unto him for righteousness. Abraham opened his mouth wide and God filled it and he became the father of many nations. That's how you open your mouth wide. And he, he taught his son. The Bible says that Abraham would command his children. And he taught Isaac. And when the famine came, Isaac opened his mouth wide and refused to run to Egypt or back to the things of the past or back to what the world has to offer. And instead he stayed and sowed in that land in the famine and reaped a hundredfold in the same year. That's how you open your mouth wide. You're obedient unto the Lord. Look at Jacob 
whose name was changed to Israel. He made a vow when he had nothing to vow with. And that's the story of many of us. Sometimes we have nothing in the situation and yet we make a vow unto God and we believe that God will put it in our hands. That's what your faith is. Faith is what you hold on to until you receive what you're believing for. Look at Deborah in the Bible. Every judgment she made was the oracles of God coming out of her mouth. She was opening her mouth wide and judging the land. Look at Samson who took the jawbone of a donkey and swung it and slew the Philistines who were the natural enemy of the Israelites. Look at David who said to Goliath, you uncircumcised Philistine, I'm going to cut your head off. <laughs> and he showed the world how to get ahead in life. <laughs> Stuck it on a pole and said, this is what I'm going to do to you if you mess with me. And they won the day. Look at Daniel. Daniel opened his mouth wide in prayer, even though the edict of the king said, you can't do that. And they cast him into a lion's den. And somebody said, well, the lions must not have been hungry. Well, it's amazing. When they brought Daniel out, the men, uh, the men that were there were, were consumed by the lions. When you open your mouth wide, you get into harmony with what God wants you to do in your life. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, we may burn in your furnace, but we will not bow to your God. And because they opened their mouths wide and proclaimed their faith, the next time Nebuchadnezzar looked in, he did not see three, he saw four. And they were loosed and they were walking around. And Nebuchadnezzar said, the fourth man looks like that of the son of God. Open your mouth wide, he said, and I will fill it. Look at Peter. Jesus had said, who do men say that I am? And Peter said, thou art the Christ. You're Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus said, flesh and blood, people have not revealed this unto you. But my father in heaven has revealed this unto you. And on this rock of revelation that you know who I am, I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And it was Peter who opened his mouth on the day of Pentecost and preached the message and said, this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, that in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And I have news for you. We're living in the last days. He's pouring out his spirit upon you. He's pouring out, turn to your neighbor and say, he's pouring out his spirit upon you today. He's pouring out his spirit upon you today. That's why you're here at Heritage of Faith. Look at Paul. All that the apostle Paul went through having been an accessory to murder. Uh -huh. Now, baptized in the Holy Spirit, preaching the gospel, writing some two-thirds of the New Testament. Look at Paul who said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you know he said that in the middle of a little tiny Roman jail cell? He said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And he also said, my God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Somebody give praise to the Lord. Open your mouth wide. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Turn to your neighbor and say, open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Opening your mouth wide, it implies a holy fluency. It implies strength of expression. It implies an enlarged hope. It implies the stretching out of your desires and fully believing God in every area of your life. Amen. How? How do you open your mouth wide? Well, let me give you three things this morning. You might want to get a pen and paper or get out your smartphone or if you brought your dumb phone with you. <laughs> get it out, get your mobile device out and take these three things down. How do you open your mouth wide? Number one, you get your heart lined up. The Bible says with the heart, man believes. Your heart is your most vital organ. It's with your heart that you believe. You'll never say anything unless you believe it in your heart. So you must get your heart lined up with the things of God. I was running from God. I wanted to be a professional entertainer, a nightclub singer. I was traveling all over the country singing. I'd been offered a contract at the Sahara Hotel in Las Vegas to sing at their lounges. When I was struck down in my body and wound up in a hospital. Funny thing happened to me on the way to Las Vegas. <laughs> I wound up in a hospital. And I had told my dad, get the hell out of my life. 
And he said, son, that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to get the hell out of your life. It's funny now. It wasn't funny then. <laughs> and I lay in that hospital room and I began to talk to God. It's amazing who you talk to when you get into trouble. <laughs> A man said to me, I don't believe in miracles. I said, well, you will when you need one. <laughs> And I began to talk to God and I called on God and suddenly something happened in my heart. I decided to believe in God. And I said, Lord, if you will heal me and cancel this surgery, which I was about to have, I will serve you. And the power of God went through my body and uh, I was healed and the doctors examined me the next day and canceled the surgery and released me from the hospital. I gave my heart to the Lord and my life was transformed. Get your heart lined up. I never got to go to Las Vegas to be an entertainer, but I did get to be an evangelist and preach the gospel of Jesus all over the world. Praise God. Get your heart, get your heart with the heart man believes. And then number two, get your mouth, get your mouth in harmony with the word of God. What you say is critical when we were kids, we used to say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Well, in my experience, that's not true. Words can and often do hurt you very much. Words are like, can be like poison darts. They, they, they sting you. They, 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 they're stuck inside you and it's sometimes hard to get them out because words can, can do great damage. Words, words can be good, words can be bad. It's important what you say. What you say is critical because your words do not fall empty to the ground, but they hang in the atmosphere. Jesus and his disciples were on their way into Bethany and he was hungry and he looked at a fig tree hoping to find figs, but there, was no fig, there were no figs on the tree. There should have been figs at that time of year, but there wasn't. And Jesus cursed the tree Actually, the Bible says he answered the tree. Well, you don't answer something unless it's talking to you. That's right. The tree was talking. Now, it wasn't talking in words like I'm talking this morning, but nevertheless, it was saying something. It was saying, you'll get no figs for me. And Jesus cut through that and said, you shall bear no more figs again forever. He cursed the tree. And the disciples were there and they were listening and watching and it looked like nothing happened on the outside. But there was something happening on the inside. Oftentimes we, we think nothing's happening on the outside, so nothing, nothing must be happening on the inside. But something was happening on the inside of that tree. It died the moment that Jesus spoke it. But it took a little while for the tree to get the message. If you go out here and cut a branch off a tree and that branch falls, those leaves will still be green for a while, even though it's dead and it's been separated from the tree. But you give it a few hours, a little while, and those green leaves will turn brown because they're dead. We look at the outside, but Jesus was dealing with the inside. And when they came back the next day, Peter said, look, Jesus, the tree that you cursed yesterday has withered up from the roots. And Jesus said a curious thing, have faith in God. Or in other words, have the God kind of faith. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, this need, this problem, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. He shall have whatsoever he saith. And what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. Yes. Yes. When you pray, believe. Everybody say, when you pray, when you pray believe. believe. In other words, right in the middle of your prayer, that's when you believe. You don't pray and then wait until tomorrow to believe. Yeah. When you pray, believe. That's right. Take the comma out. When you pray, believe. Everybody say, when you pray, believe. When you pray, say, when I pray, I believe. When I pray, I believe. In other words, right in the middle of your prayer, that's when you believe. You don't wait until you see the tree dead the next day. You pray at that precise moment. When you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. When you pray, believe. 
that you receive and you shall have it. Lindsay and I had an experience right after we were married. She knew that the Lord had spoken to me about the healing ministry. It had been prophesied over me some years earlier, but it had not yet come to pass because it was not yet God's time. And she and I were in a certain city ministering. And at the end of the service, I said, Lord, heal that man's big toe. And I wondered why I said it. It didn't come out of my mind. It came out of my spirit. And we closed the service and went home. And a few days later, I got a letter from a man. He said, I was in your service and I had broken my toe. And when you said, Lord, heal that man's big toe, my toe snapped. And suddenly I could put weight on it and I could move it. And, and the break was healed. And he said, what did you do? <laughs> and I wrote back and said, I didn't do anything. I just said what God showed me to say. And I wondered why I said it. And I went to bed that night. And I had a dream of a toe. No foot, just a toe. Just a toe sticking up. Had, had the same dream several nights in a row. And I said to Lindsay, Lindsay, I'm having this dream of this toe. And she said, this is the beginning of your healing ministry. I said, a toe? <laughs> Do not despise a small beginning. Sometimes big things start out small. The iceberg that sank the Titanic was a snowflake 15,000 years ago. Don't despise a small beginning. And she and I set our faith together and we began to pray and we came across this scripture in Mark 11. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. Our desire was for a healing ministry. It had been prophesied over me since I was a boy. And we set our faith together on that scripture and we believed. And we confessed a healing ministry. Now don't make any mistake. No one else was getting healed. But we confessed a healing ministry. We declared we had it by our faith. And day after day and week after week and months passed and we didn't announce it. We didn't tell anybody. Just the two of us. And the day came when I was preaching in another city and all of a sudden the word of knowledge which had never flowed through me before began to flow and people began to get healed in the service. And what we had prayed for had actually manifested. Amen. What things soever you desire, when you pray, believe. Right in the midst of your prayer time, believe. Get your heart lined up. Get your mouth lined up. And then believe, number three, believe that you receive what you're believing for. It is so critical. It transformed my life. And God is no respecter of persons. If he'll do that for me, he'll do that for you in your circumstances. Now, what are you facing today? Are you facing some attack spiritually? Do you feel about a million miles away from God? What is it that you're going through? Is something striking your body? Is it something in your head or is it something that's attacked an organ in your body or is it your, your shoulder? Lindsay is believing God for a healing in her, in her arm today and her shoulder from what she accidentally did. Is it your foot or is it your, is it your knee? Is there a swelling or is there pain somewhere? What are you facing? Did you come with discouragement today or despair or has something happened? Has something been said about you that has wounded you and hurt you on the inside? And, and you came to church this morning and although you're dressed up and you look nice on the inside, you just feel like it's, it's over for you? What is it that you're facing? What is it that the devil has tried to perpetrate on your life? Well, the reason that you're here this morning is not to get three points in a poem and a hearty handshake when it's over. The reason you came here is to get a deliverance. Is to have God's touch upon your life. That's what heritage of faith is all about. This church is not a parking lot. This is a filling station. 
This is where you come so you can be filled with the word of God. That's why when we sing and when we praise him, as the praise goes up, the walls begin to come down so that you can hear the word of God. The, the, the praise will never take the place of the preaching of the word, but it prepares you for the preaching of the word. There must be the preaching of the word for only the preaching of the word causes mankind to come to repentance. There's got to be the praise and the worship, but you have to have the preaching and the teaching of the word of God, but you also have to have the confirmation. You also have to have the miracles and the signs and the wonders. And just to sing he's the God of miracles as we did is not enough. We have to believe it and we have to act on it and we have to expect it to happen. That's why we must open our mouth wide so that the Lord can fill it. That's why we sing our praises unto him and we hear the word of God and it lodges down in our heart. And then out of the abundance of our hearts, our mouths begin to speak and suddenly faith begins to rise and miracles begin to happen. Somebody give praise to the Lord this morning. Open your mouth wide and I will fill it. Lift your voice this morning in tongues. Shistabra kasoya sambra. Mishtianda nakasito kushtumbra kasa. Lift your voice unto the Lord this morning. Shout unto the Lord with the voice of triumph. Me sombra kasati ashtanda kasayasa. Ke la mosobiata na kasande kishtim brakasa. Shesti anana kasabra kasa. Shoti anana kasambra kasatia. Me shtibri kisi anana kasadia. Sashti anana kasabu. We're praying the mysteries of God. Shesto bro kosoyat sandia. And then when you pray in tongues, then stop and interpret. Interpret, pray in your own language. Pray in English so that God can give you ideas and understanding and new insights and new concepts and new and innovative ways of doing things. That's the value of praying in tongues. Lindsay, I stand with you in faith this morning in the name of Jesus. I rebuke this attack against that muscle in your shoulder. I curse it in Jesus' name. And I send the word right now for healing. Who needs special healing this morning? Who needs a special healing? If you do, stand up on your feet today. Stand up on your feet today. Let me pray the prayer of faith. In Bible days, the apostles came to a house or to a corner or to an alley or to a cave or to someone's home and they said, is any sick among you? Let them call for the elders of the church and let them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord and the prayer of faith, not the prayer of doubt, the prayer of faith shall save the sick person and the Lord will raise you up. Someone who is sitting next to someone who is standing, just touch them right now. Just touch them. Remember the Bible says that you shall lay hands upon the sick and they shall recover. That is a faith statement. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I come now against this satanic attack of the devil. You foul, tormenting sickness. I adjure you by the name of Jesus. Come out. Every sickness in Jesus' name, come out. Pain, come out. Discomfort, come out in the name of Jesus. The problem in the muscle, the problem in the bone, the problem in the knees, in the name of Jesus, come out. Fluid, go back into those discs into the vertebra. Scoliosis, I bind you and curse you in the name of Jesus. Heart problem, heart palpitations, in the name of Jesus, heart beat normally. Arterial sclerosis, come out. Plaque be removed. Every cell, every red cell, every white cell, be normal in the name of Jesus. Every outlaw cell, I cast you out. Every cancer, cancer in the bone, cancer in the breast, cancer in the brain, cancer in the vital organs, cancer in the skin, cancer in the blood, come out in the name of Jesus. I take authority over it. 
God has given us authority. He said on the last night of his earthly life here on this earth, before now you've asked nothing in my name. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. I speak to every trace of cancer. Come out, every tumor, every mass, every growth. Come out in the name of Jesus. Pancreas, kidney, liver, colon, gallbladder, be healed in the name of Jesus. Diverticulitis, come out. Sickle cell, go in the name of Jesus. Lupus, come out. Every artery, every vein, open up so that the blood may flow unrestricted from the crown of your head even unto the soles of your feet in the authority of the name of Jesus. Lindsay, honey, get a microphone. Come up here and join me. Part of your healing is, is when you pray for someone else. Get a microphone, Lindsay, whatever the, Lord, whatever the Lord says to you right now. It's a part of your healing. In the name of Jesus right now, I lift up anything that's a connector, an elbow to a hand, a this or that. You know how the song goes, the foot bone's connected to the ankle bone. Something is in the connector, whatever the connector is that isn't working properly, we speak to it and we command it to be normal. We command it like, I kept, while I was sitting over there, I kept getting the word bursa, like bursitis. And I don't even know what that is, but bursa and bursitis in the name of Jesus, I speak to you to be healed. And I know as we're going into colder weather, the word arthritis keeps coming up because Satan loves to make people creak. And in the name of Jesus, I ask you, Father God, for you to take Holy Ghost anointing where those joints don't creak, where those cells don't come in and leave, where, where there's a, an emptiness. But the joint that's supposed to have stuff inside, I don't even know how to say it, but the goo that's supposed to be at the end of the joint so you don't creak. I ask you, Father God, to heal it in Jesus' name. Floating kneecaps. Floating kneecaps, stop floating in the name of Jesus. Ovaries, be healed in the name of Jesus. Spine, from the top all the way down, be healed. From the top all the way down, be healed. And I'm going to join my faith with Richard on scoliosis. God said he'd make crooked places straight. And in the name of Jesus, straighten up. And in the name of Jesus, I pray for your thinking to straighten up. I pray for your thinking to straighten up. Hallelujah. And I'm going to tell you what Richard has to say to me. Hallelujah. So many times my mouth gets myself in trouble. And he will look at me and he'll say two very, very spiritual, precious words. And when I give them to you, I pray you receive them in love, down flesh. Richard has to say to me, down flesh. And I say, as your flesh decreases, God in you increases. And he increases the way you think and he increases the way you process so that he can increase the way you speak and the creative power in your tongue creates life and life more abundantly. For those of you who can't sleep because you just can't turn it off, I pray in the name of Jesus for you to settle, for your mind to settle, for you to settle and your sleep be sweet and know that as you sleep, God can keep the thoughts there until morning so that when you get up, you can handle it better, process it better, go do your job better, whatever it is, peace, peace, peace be still. It's not only nothing missing, nothing broken, but one definition of peace is destroying the stronghold that creates chaos. Whatever chaos is trying to be a stronghold in your life, financial chaos, physical chaos, cancer chaos, sickness and disease chaos, family chaos, uh, job or ministry chaos, peace be still in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This may sound silly, but I'm going to talk to your pinky toe. When you were uh, getting up somewhere, four of your toes went east and the pinky toe went west. In the name of Jesus, I pray for bones in your feet, every bone in your foot, for your pinky toe to be healed, for lines to straighten up. The Bible said not only no sick among them, no feeble of, among them, but no bones were broken among them. We speak to osteoporosis and osteoarthritis and we speak to bones. Then we go into the marrow inside the bone and we command that that blood is like flowing through as the blood of Jesus. We purify your blood. Ezekiel 16, 6 says you'll not be polluted in your own blood. And we pray for your blood to be purified. Migraine headaches go. I had migraine headaches my entire life. 
I was 23 or 24 years old. I walked up to Oral. <clears throat> I'd been in bed for three days, and it, it was so bad. You know, when they, it, my husband tried to bring me like a 7-Up so I could get something in me and take some medicine for it, and just the can opening up and the bubbles of the 7-Up, it, it sounded to me like a cannon went off. And my father-in-law came up, and he laid hands on me, and he said, you're going to have this for three more days. And I looked at him as if to say, are you kidding me? And I said, why three more days? He said, I don't know. And at the end of those three days, I'm now 62. I have never had a migraine headache again. So I speak to migraine headaches. I speak to debilitating headaches. I speak to hormones. I speak to hormone headaches. I speak to hormones for women and men, even both of you, yes. in the name of Jesus. Line up with the Word of God. Line up with the Word of God. Come into balance. Anything that's out of balance anything that's out of balance in the name of Jesus, balance, high blood pressure, low blood pressure, high blood sugar, low blood sugar. God does not want you to live in highs and lows. He wants you to live in balance. And I pray for you to balance in the name of Jesus. I pray for couples trying to have babies in the name of Jesus, Father God, divine intervention, divine intervention. My three babies are living proof. There was divine intervention. I was told at 18, I'd never have children. My first baby that lived was when I was 29 years old. And now they're all grown up divine intervention in the name of Jesus. And I still go back to your thinking and I'm going to call it critical thinking. Critical thinking is when you're really good at analyzing things, but critical thinking gone awry is when you're critical of everything that comes around. And I pray, and maybe you have been heavily criticized and it's wounded your soul and it's wounded your spirit in the name of Jesus. I pray for your thinking to be renewed daily. You have the mind of Christ, the thoughts of Christ, the thoughts of the word of God, and your thinking is in harmony with the word of God. So your believing is in harmony. Then out of the abundance of your heart, you speak it and you give life to situations. And that means you create things. I pray for creative ideas and witty inventions. And if there's someone in here that's got an invention, I pray for the patent to come quickly and for you to figure it out supernaturally in Jesus name. Amen. Pull out those harmful words. I, I, uh, he's saying fiery darts, pull them out. I went through situations of fiery darts being spoken over me. And literally it sounds really weird to say this, but it was though I would feel them in my back like you were being stabbed in the back with words. And the Bible says that um, to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one, it means to quench the wicked words spoken. And then when those are quenched, you apply the balm of Gilead. In the name of Jesus, anybody that feels like they are under the curse of words, maybe you feel like you have been spoken words against you. Maybe people have a critical tongue against you. Maybe you just feel like you have just flat been stabbed in yes. the back. Yes. And in the natural, it seems like you actually hurt in your back from being stabbed in the back. And in the name of Jesus, we pull out, out. those words. Out. We send them pull to out. the uninhabited pull places out. of the earth. We command them to have no effect pull on out. you, to become totally Jesus. void, and we have them powerless according to the word of God. And then we apply the balm of Gilead on you for you to be soothed and healed as if they never happened in the first place. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Somebody give praise unto the Lord. Praise your Father. 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 Receive your healing. 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 Receive, 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 receive. That's why you came today. That's why you're here. That's why you got out of bed this morning to come to church, to open your mouth wide so that the Lord can fill it. Not so that the world can put something in it, but so that God can put something in it to transform your life. This is a place of transformation. That's why Pastor Justin's here. That's why all the staff is here. That's why we sing and praise and worship God. That's why we hear the word. That's why we pray. That's why we believe God, so that we can open our mouths wide. And I hear the Lord saying, ask largely. Ask boldly. 
ask frequently. For he's saying, I have the blessings that you need. They are from me. Do not doubt me, but believe that I am telling the truth and expect me to fulfill my word. Somebody give praise to the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Who's felt the power of God and the presence of God this morning? Who can tell a miracle is starting to happen in your life? Wave your hand at me. Who can tell there's a difference just now since we prayed? Just wave your hand if that's you. If you can tell there's a difference, if you feel something's been lifted off of you, something's been pulled out of you, wave your hand at me. When I prayed, when Lindsay prayed, when somebody else prayed. Well, let's just brad the nail on the other side this morning, shall we? Let's just finish this off. Let's don't stop unfinished. Let's stand together and turn and lay hands on one another throughout this entire crowd. And let's pray the prayer of faith. The Bible says, pray you one for another that you may be healed. Do you have another word, Lindsay? Actually, it's for Justin and I pray for both of you. I have this weird thing that happens to me like... Um, I'm going to say it in the way I know how to, sitting at the feet of Oral Roberts, that he would say something. And now, even to this day, all these years later, if I look at a scripture, I'll think of one thing that he said that triggers something else that he said that triggers something else that he said. And it's like my mind is suddenly filled with the remembering of things that I wasn't even thinking about. And I always say it's like God is watering my mind with the word. And I know that, that I got to sit under him, but that's okay. You can still have the same stuff because if God can deposit it in me, he can deposit it in you. And so as you begin to think of things, maybe you weren't there, but God can still say, well, here's this and let's add this to it and then think about this and think about this. And it's like um, connecting the dots, like your thoughts connect the dots and God can give you one thought and then it goes to another and to another and to another and to another until you write so fast you can hardly stop writing and I happen to see books in you where you can just go one after another after another after another after another and it just like where did that thought come from? Well it wasn't you but that's okay most of mine aren't me either and when I get into my thoughts I get messed up but in the thoughts of God you're just going to go write this down then write this down then write this down and write this down until you you're so exhausted and you think, wow, where did that come from? And then God gives you more and more and he refreshes you. It sounds weird to say that in your exhaustion, he refreshes you because when it's from him and it just keeps coming, it is honestly so refreshing. So I pray for you to have the thoughts of God, the mind of Christ, the ability to write, the ability to record it, the ability to just go and keep on going and go and keep on going and go and keep on going. You're just like the energizer bunny with your thoughts because they just keep on going and keep on going and you keep on writing until you finally have to say, hand, you've got to stop. But God says, nope, keep writing, keep writing, keep writing, keep writing, because he's going to continually fill you with thoughts that become words, that become writing, that become revelation, that become life-changing for the people around you. And for both of you, both of you, it's like a duet. God doesn't see it as individual. He sees this cool duet. And where one can put a 1,000 to flight and two can put 10,000 to flight, what a cool duet. And God just says, keep on doing it, and I will fill you until it's overflow in Jesus name. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Give praise. Isn't that good? Isn't that good? Isn't that wonderful? Now just before you turn and pray for someone let me illustrate this scripture, pray one for another. Many years ago there was a woman who worked in our ministry who was diagnosed with cancer. The doctor said there's nothing that can be done medically. Get your affairs in order. You have six months. She retired, she quit her job, and the Lord spoke to her and said, I want you to go throughout our city and find everyone you can who has cancer and pray over them. And she did as she was able. Within three months' time, she went back to the doctors and there was not a trace of cancer in her body. In fact, she ended her retirement and came back to work in our ministry and lived quite a number of years before she went home to be with the Lord. Back in 2001, I fell and broke my right shoulder blade. I fractured it five inches. It was on a Friday. I'd never experienced that kind of pain in my life. The emergency room doctor said uh, the 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 worst pain that I see people coming in here from accidents is from shoulder pain. 
He said, I, I have 350 pound linemen from football teams coming here crying like a baby because of the pain from injuring in shoulders. I said to him, is it all right if I cry? <laughs> he said, just let it go. I cried, it hurt so bad. And we were doing our live television show at that time. I spent the weekend in misery, but Monday night I said, I'm going on television live. I was in a sling just like she was. And I began to pray one for another. And God healed my shoulder while I was praying for other people. So turn and lay hands on someone and pray the prayer of faith, knowing that as you pray for their healing, that healing can come back to you. In Jesus' name, pray for this one on our right. Pray for this one on our left. We speak to Satan. Command him to take his dirty, rotten, stinking, filthy hands off. Loose them and set them free. In Jesus' name. We believe. We set our faith. And we're not coming out of this faith agreement. In Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah. 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 Now just begin to lift your hands and give God praise. Give God praise. The healing is going into them and now I believe it's coming back to you in the area that you need it most. In Jesus' mighty name, let all the people say amen. amen. Now let your head be... Now, every head bowed for a moment. Father, don't let a man or a woman or a young person who's heard me minister today and heard Lindsay give that testimony in the prayer of faith and the prophetic word over Pastor Justin and his wife. Don't let a person here this morning lose their soul and go to hell. Hell was not made for people. Hell was made for Satan and all of the angels that fell with him. Now demonic spirits roaming this earth. I rebuke that in Jesus' name. And I pray this morning over you. There's, there are those here this morning who've not made a commitment of your life to Christ. Oh, you know about the Bible. You come to church, but you've never really made a commitment or you have slipped away from God and you feel about a million miles from him. But you knew if you came to church today, somebody would lead you in the prayer of faith back to God. And I am that somebody. I know what to do if you will cooperate. I'm asking every man and every woman, you're tired of sin, you're tired of the lifestyle, you're tired of the game, you're tired of running from God. You once had a relationship with him, but it's grown cold and you want to stoke the fire today and you'd like me to pray the prayer of faith with you. If that's you, if I'm describing you, take the first step, hold your hand up high. I want to pray for you. Hold it up high. Right now, hold it high. Now you with your hands raised, very quickly step out in the aisle and come to this altar. Come right here and let me pray the prayer of faith. Don't be ashamed. Jesus said, if you'll confess me in front of men, I will confess you in front of my father. But if you do not confess me in front of men, then neither will I confess you in front of my Father. If you want in this prayer, step out in the aisle right now and come for it. The Bible says today is the day of salvation. Don't wait till tomorrow. Come right now. Ask one more time, is there someone else? Say, Richard, wait for me. I need this prayer. If that's you, step out and come right now. Do not miss your hour of visitation. Praise God. Now I want you here in the front to lift your hands like I'm doing. And I want the congregation to stretch your hands out toward them. 
And you here in the front, I want you to pray this prayer out loud after me. Oh God, God. be merciful merciful to me, me. a sinner, a a backslider. I have missed the mark with my life and I repent. I am sorry. I change my mind. I turn my back on the past. I renounce Satan and his grip on my life. Satan, take your hands off me. For I belong to God. I confess every sin. I am truly sorry. Forgive me. Cleanse me and make me new. From this hour, I will serve God with all my heart, my mind, and my strength. I declare the old things are passed away. Everything has become new. I am forgiven. I am cleansed. And I'll never be the same again. Jesus is my Lord. From now until forever. In his name I pray, amen. Somebody give praise unto the Lord.